Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to episode number 37 of the Detroit Lions franchise here on Madden NFL 21. Today your 2-4 Detroit Lions travel on the road to face the 3-4 Minnesota Vikings. Before we jump into the game, we do have a breakout opportunity and it is for middle linebacker Jelani Tavai. It's a very interesting opportunity this week against the Vikings. Tavai, in my opinion, hasn't really played that well for a breakout opportunity. But nonetheless, we'll take it regardless. So we get to see if we can break out Tavai in this game. And now we travel to US Bank Stadium where NFC North rivals clash. If you're excited for this one, make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. A little bit more of a storyline for this game is Mike Zimmer, the new head coach for the Detroit Lions, gets a little chance at revenge going up against his old team for the first time. Mike Zimmer was fired this past offseason after a horrible stint in Minnesota in the 2020 season, and they replaced him with ex-Steelers coach Mike Tomlin. They went out and got themselves some weapons too and improved to 3-4, and four, so nothing over the top, but good things here in Minnesota. Kirk Cousins is playing pretty decent for his own right, 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns, 5 picks. But he has loads of weapons on offense. They're going to start on offense, and there is weapon number one, Adam Thielen, with a quick seven-yard catch on the outside. They have Justin Jefferson on the other side, as well as top five pick this past year, Jamar Chase out of LSU. There is Justin Jefferson on the first down grab. Now they're going to hand it to their backfield weapon, Dalvin Cook. So once again, Minnesota is going to be hard to contain in this game. But now second and 10, they're going to try to dump it off for Cook, and that time he is met by Justin Coleman coming down. Set up a nice third and eight here. Good chance for the Lions to get off the field. They're going to pass for it. Cousins, clean pocket, checks it down to Cook, who is able to get the first down, breaks the tackle of the rookie, Nate Lamon, who's getting some snaps now on nickel defense. Our pass coverage against tight ends hasn't been this great this year, and Mike Zimmer's trying something new out, giving the chance to the young Landman. Jamie Collins makes the tackle that time for the three-yard reception. Now handoff Cook, and he's got some space left side. Picks up the first down on the 13-yard run, and Minnesota has a nice drive going in their first possession of the game. Now first and 10, a little spot concept. There is the rookie Jamar Chase as he fights his way to the 11, and Kirk Cousins is perfect so far on the day. So a red zone trip here for Minnesota. Kirk Cousins is going to throw on first down. He's drifting back in the pocket, barely gets... The pass off as it falls to the turf. Now, second and 10, coming in two tight end set. He's going to throw it left side for Irv Smith Jr., who's going to get it down to the two, setting up a third and one for Minnesota. They're not going to hand it to Colt. They're going to throw for it again, and Collins is a free rusher to the backfield, brings Kirk Cousins down for a sack, and Minnesota will kick three to begin their day. That's going to give the ball over to Matthew Stafford in this Detroit Lions offense. We had a rough game last week against Los Angeles. Three interceptions. Stafford was on the ground plenty of times from Aaron Donald and company. Hopefully looking for a bounce back game against the Minnesota Vikings. On their first play, they're going to throw. And they're going to throw left side for Galladay, who has the first down. Nice quick pickup of 14 to the number one receiver here in Detroit. Had four catches, 70 yards last week. Putting together a pretty solid 2021. Very next play, another curl route to Galladay, and he has the catch again. So two quick passes to Galladay. Looks like the Lions are trying to get the ball in the hands of their best offensive player. Now at first and 10, they try a draw as Minnesota is not fooled. Barr brings Swift down, probably behind the line for one. And now sets up second and 11. Carry on Johnson's going to get his first carry of the day, and he doesn't get much success either. He gains three, making it now third and eight. Swift checks back in. He gets to play fake Stafford in the pocket. Trying to look downfield, but nobody is open. And that's going to be a covered sack for Tyrone Crawford. And the Lions punt on their first possession. So 3 nothing after both teams have had the football once as we go a little bit later into the first quarter. Dalvin Cook with a nice solid gain of four. Now second and six. Quick drop for Cousins. Throws it left side for his tight end, who picks up the first down. Now, first and 10 once more from their own 36. And Cousins, quick pass right side. There is Adam Thielen again. Tight coverage by Okuda, who's played very well the past couple weeks against some pretty solid receivers. 
Second and four. Now Kirk Cousins across the middle. There is a wide open Jamar Chase. Bounces off of Tracy Walker and goes to the ground, but he is shaken up on the play. So Jamar Chase will come off the field. He will return later in the game, however. So nothing too ma major for Minnesota. But here's a major problem for Detroit's defense. Another quick pass to Justin Jefferson gets Minnesota inside the red zone. And that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. So it's 3 0 Minnesota, but they are driving deep into Detroit territory. Here is first and 10 from the 12. Handoff Cook, and he's met in the backfield. Jamie Collins there to bring him down, unblocked off the edge. Now, third and seven in the shotgun is Cousins. They're going to try to throw for it here. Cousins could pocket, throws it right side, and that ball is caught for a touchdown. Adam Thielen absolutely mosses. Okuda in the end zone and that is a touchdown for Minnesota another play where Okuda has phenomenal coverage it doesn't seem to matter so now 10 nothing here for Minnesota that pass batted down across the middle and now two second and 10 they're going to hand it off to Swift he's met right side Anthony Barr I guess Swift in the positive range but now it's a long third and eight Stafford's looking to pass for it going to fire across the middle has Cordell Patterson for a gain of 12. Cordero Patterson, this is also a revenge game for him as he spent the early part of his years in Minnesota before bouncing around to Chicago and now to another NFC North team, the Detroit Lions. Second and six, Stafford drifts to his left. He's going to check it down to Swift, and Swift's actually going to make a play on this as he gets by a couple of defenders and picks up the first down. We say this every week, but Swift's been pretty integral in the passing game as he converts another one there. Here's another handoff for Carrion Johnson. Picks up three, setting up second and seven. Stafford going to pass forward here. Checks it down to Swift, who will fight forward for a quick gain of six. Making it a short third and one. We're going to hand off to Swift again. And Swift up the middle is met by Michael Pearson, though, but he gets the first down. But Danny Amendola is hurt on the play. The slot receiver for Detroit has to come off the field. Now second and four, and Stafford is intercepted. This one on the outside, Mike Hughes, and it looks like he's going to take it back for six, a pick six for Minnesota as they extend their lead to three scores. Second straight week, Stafford's thrown a pick six as Mike Hughes gives Minnesota a 17-point lead, and this one has quickly turned into a rout in Minnesota. This Lions offense has not looked the same in the past couple weeks, and now Stafford going down again. Troy Dye comes on the blitz absolutely untouched. And now third and 12, Stafford underneath center is going to drop back and try to throw for this one. And he's just going to check it down to carry on Johnson. I guess nobody was open downfield. But that'll be a punt away for Detroit as their offense continues to stall. So this is a prime opportunity for Minnesota to add more points, and they're going to start off very nicely with a Quick pass to Irv Smith, who was left wide open on that play. Gets it in one play to Detroit territory. And on the very next play, handoff Cook. Cook's going to pick up maybe about four, as he's had a pretty solid day on the ground so far. Minnesota, however, is doing a lot of passing, but when you have the weapon weapons they do, why blame them? As there's Irv Smith picking up another first down before being brought down by Levine. But first and ten now. For Minnesota, 3.30 to go in the first half. Prime opportunity for some points. As Cousins has a clean pocket, and that one goes off the hands of Jefferson. Nice coverage on that play. Second and 10, now empty set here for Minnesota. Cousins is going to pass, and he's going to throw it up the middle for a wide open Adam Thielen, who falls into the end zone for a touchdown. Thielen runs right by Desmond Trufant. He has his second on the day, and Minnesota extends their lead to 24 to nothing going into the two warning. This has turned into quite the route here in Minnesota as the Lions just looking for any points they can find to close out the first half. Now it's not going to do it though as a one yard pass from Stafford. Now he's going to look across the middle and it's off the hands of Cordell Patterson setting up third and nine. Very crucial third down here for Detroit. He's going to check it down across the middle for Hawkinson who's not going to get it. That'll make it fourth and one, the field goal team is out for Detroit, but it's a fake. Chase Daniel, the holder, throws for it, connects with Jesse James, and he will convert the first down. Lions know that they need a touchdown here. They're not willing to settle for three. 
Next play, though, that one should have been picked off off the hands of the defender. Now makes it second and ten. Stafford's going to throw for it again. Rolls to his left side. Has absolutely nobody open. And will just get rid of it out of bounds. It's so now third and ten. Bunch formation to Stafford's right. He's going to pump fake across the middle. But he has a wide open Cordero Patterson. And he's going to get it inside the ten. However, there is 11 seconds left. So Lions will use a timeout. They still have two. So maybe a couple of shots for the end zone here. First and goal, Stafford rolls out to his right. He's going to waste him some time, and he throws it away with five seconds. And Detroit's just going to bring out the field goal team. Raiders going to get it up and through, and Detroit at least gets some points to close out the first half. But it's 24-3. Detroit getting blown out again in back-to-back -back weeks. Will they force a comeback like they did last week, or will this one continue the route it is going? We'll have to find out on the other side of the half. Now we're going to go here with our halftime report, take a look at a couple of games around the league, starting off in Cleveland, where the Chicago Bears are losing once more to Cleveland. Foles is 4 for 8 for 48 yards, and maybe his job is in jeopardy if Chicago cannot pick up the pace. Next game, we're going to go south to Houston, who's hosting the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they are currently at 21-7 to coming into the half. Watson has two touchdown passes. And with all the rumors circling around him, got to wonder about his future. And then lastly, a little bit of an NFC East battle between the football team and the Eagles. Football team up 7 to nothing at the end of the half. Haskins, 139 yards and a touchdown for him. So a couple of quarterbacks under the spotlight were highlighted in this halftime report. But let's get back to our game now. Lions at least start off with the football here as Stafford's hit as he throws. That's kind of been the trend thanks to this beat-up offensive line. Second and 10, handoff Swift. A nice move by Swift, but he's absolutely blasted. He fumbles, and it's recovered by Minnesota. Harrison, the hitman Smith, makes his presence known. Absolutely blows up Swift. Hunter with the recovery. And this is not the start you want if you're a Detroit Lions fan. It's so on first and 10, a quick pass outside. Jamar Chase comes back into the game to start the second half. He gains a quick eight. Vikings have all the chips in their favor as they're going to try a little screen now to Justin Jefferson. Coleman reads that one very nicely. Setting up now a third and three Detroit Lions showing pressure. They're going to bring pressure, but a quick throw by Cousins. Nice heads-up play to find his mismatch. And Irv Smith will convert the first down. So now Minnesota in Detroit red zone territory once more. First and ten handoff to Cook, and he's got a big hole up the middle. Dalvin Cook inside the five. And Minnesota is another prime position to add points. Very first play from first goal. They're actually going to throw for as Cousins backs up in the pocket. He's got nobody open. And he's going to drift backwards for a sack. Madden pocket awareness results in a Trey Flowers sack for a loss of 10. And now we have second and goal from the 15. Cousins now definitely going to throw for it. He finds his tight end. That is Kyle Rudolph who has been relatively quiet this game. But he sets up third and goal from the two. Handoff Cook. And Cook is blown up. Nice hit by Jared Davis. Don't call his name very much anymore. But he saves the touchdown. That's going to set up fourth and goal. And Minnesota is actually going to go for it here. This is a risky call for Minnesota. They're going for the juggler here. Handoff Cook. But he's met Christian Jones with the stop. And a goal line stand here for Detroit. Maybe that's the spark they need. As you can see, Christian Jones fights off the block, gets in the backfield. And if you need a spark on offense, your defense just gave it to you. Now first and 10, have to go 98 yards and carry on Johnson. Well, on the very first play, he's going to pick up about 15 of those. Best run of the day here for Johnson on his only fourth carry of the day. Now makes it first and 10. Stafford throwing right side. There's Cordell Patterson on the curl in front of Mike Hughes. That's another first down for Detroit. So Detroit trying to put together a drive here in the second half. Stafford looking to go deep, and Galladay somehow comes away with that one in front of Harrison Smith. Galladay, big body receivers, he's just going to go up and get that one. 29 yards to his name. It's now first and 10. Stafford hit as he throws. All kind of pressure in the pocket there. Sets up second and 10 now. Bunch formation to his right. Stafford, though, is going to step to his left. He's going to find a wide open Tyler Vaughn's. Juan stepping in for the injured Amendola, who will not return for this game. Now second and five, motion man Patterson right side. Stafford's going to throw forward. He's going to look towards Patterson, who's going to catch it at about the sticks, setting up third and inches. Johnson is your deep back. They're going to hand it to him, and he's going to pick up the first down with ease down to the 13-yard line. 
And this is probably the deepest Detroit's been in quite a little bit. First and 10, 24 to 3. Galladay with a quick pass on the RPO, and he gets it to the one yard line. Goal to go now for Detroit. They need to score a touchdown here. They're going to hand it to Carrion Johnson. He's just going to punch it in for a touchdown, Detroit. And they go 98 yards on this drive and connect with a touchdown. So maybe a little bit of fire here from Detroit. They had to come back last week against Los Angeles before coming short. We'll have to see if they have one in store this week in the fourth quarter. As they're now down 24 to 10. Minnesota is driving, however, but it is third and 15. As Cousins, he's going to drift back in the pocket and he's going down for a sack. Romeo Okora gets there, as that is a covered sack at its finest. And that sets up a 51-yard field goal now for Dan Bailey from right hash. Kick is up, and it's actually short. Dan Bailey doesn't get it the 51 yards, and once more, Minnesota leaves points on the field. So still only a two-score game here now for the Lions, and they have all the momentum. Screen pass to start for Swift. He's going to get maybe about eight of those. As now that's going to make it second in short. Stafford, though, still going to throw for it. He's going to look deep for Seth Williams, and he's intercepted Harrison Smith with the interception. Beautiful play by Harrison Smith. Covers all sorts of ground to reach this one. Third interception of the season for him. Stafford's ninth of the season. Stafford thought he had a streaking Seth Williams for six, but Harrison Smith shows off his range and comes over and intercepts that one. Beautiful play by him. Goes up with one hand. And just like that, Detroit gives the ball right back to Minnesota. So with a quarter to play, you got to think Minnesota's going to start running some clock, but they're actually going to go play fake here on first and 10, but it works out for him as he finds Kyle Rudolph downfield to the 41. 11 minutes to go now in this game. Now they're going to hand it off to Cook, and he's met immediately by Nate Landman. But Deshaun Hand is on the ground. He is shaking up on the play. Looks like he's in a lot of pain, but he's only going to come off for a little bit. Hand would be okay. He's now on third 11. Cousins finds Justin Jefferson to Detroit territory. And once more, Minnesota is driving. Now underneath 10 minutes here left in this game, a little play fake to Cook. Cousins in the pocket. He's going to try to throw it, and that pass is batted down by Tavai. Might have could have had a pick there, but nonetheless, it sets up third and seven for Cousins in this offense, and he's going to make him pay. Jamar Chase to the right side in between Coleman and Collins moves the sticks as Detroit's third down defense lets them down again. First and 10 now cut by Cook. Nice little juke move right to left. Gets him a gain of six as it's now third and four. Vikings looking to throw for it, throws it, and Cook comes away with it despite Landman contesting the catch heavily, and that is another conversion for Minnesota. Now first and 10, though, they're still not done throwing it. His cousin's going to look, and he's going to find his man, Jefferson, inside the 10, making it goal to go once more for Minnesota. Jefferson's got six catches on the game, and let's make it seven, and let's just give him a touchdown. Justin Jefferson, 10th touchdown already on the season on the quick slant. And just like that, Minnesota is once again up three scores with six minutes to play. Lions' chances looking dire and dire by the minute. Well, they need points, and they need them quick. And here's a nice little pass to Jared Patterson out of the backfield. And he's going to get 15 more. Anthony Harris tackles him high. That's going to be an easy face mask for the refs. And in one play, the Lions go from the 29 of their territory to the 33 of Minnesota. So probably the biggest set of yard gainage for the Lions here. And that suggests exactly what they need here. Now a quick pass out to DeAndre Swift as there's an injured Viking coming off the field. Second and three now. Stafford looking to pass for it. He's going to check it down again to Swift. And Swift fights through the tackle and gets the first down. Nice way to fight through Anthony Harris as it gives the Lions another set of downs. Stafford with a quick pass. That one should have been picked off, but it was not. Jared Burton also, our backup left tackle, comes off the field. So we're down to our third string left tackle, Stone Forsythe. Pretty good blocking on that play. Gets Johnson inside the 10 and sets up Detroit. Now goal to go. This offense finally starting to click here in the fourth quarter. And Stafford on first to 10 rolls out to his right. Going to set his feet, find Swift. Swift, however, cannot turn up into the end zone. Makes it second and goal from the one. Detroit still going to pass for it here. He barely gets the pass away, but it's offline for Patterson. Now it's third and goal. Come out in a very heavy package. It's a play fake, though, and Stafford finds a wide-open Jesse James in the end zone. 
touchdown Lions as they get their 17th point of the game and they bring it within 14. However, it is the two minute warning. Detroit now needs a stop and they need a quick score. And they have first and 18 for Minnesota after an illegal block in the back call. And they're going to hand off Cook. Cook's going to run into Marvin Wilson. So that'll be the first time out for Detroit. Now second and 13. Stretch to Cook. And Christian Jones flies in for the tackle for a loss. Setting up now third and 16. Is Minnesota going to throw for it? No, they're going to play it safe with another run by Cook. Forced Detroit to burn their last time out. But they will get the ball back. Dustin Colquitt on for the punt. Cordero Patterson is deep to return. Fields at about the 15. And he's going to fight his way up to the 25. So a 10-yard gain for Cordero Patterson. And Detroit has a minute 40 to get 14 points. Let's we'll see what they start off with here. Is on first and 10. They try to check it down to Swift, who actually loses two yards. But he at least gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Now second and 11. Stafford takes it from the gun, looking across the middle offline for Cordell Patterson. Sets up a long third and 11. Can Detroit convert here? Stafford hit in the pocket, but gets it downfield to Galladay. What a pass as Galladay gets his hands underneath that one down to about midfield. Lions off is now going no huddle. Stafford drifts to his right, somehow is caught by Hawkinson, but he is tackled in bounds. Time is ticking for Detroit as second and three. Stafford's going to look left side and find Galladay at the sideline. Nice tiptoe by Galladay. That'll give Detroit Lions a chance to reset. First and 10, 40 seconds to go now. Stafford's going to take a shot for the end zone. He's got Patterson, but is broken up by Mike Hughes. Let's see if the Lions take another shot here on second and 10. They're going to look left side, taking it, but it's way overthrown for Galladay. As now we got third and 10. 31 seconds to go. Blitz by Minnesota. Throw right side. And what a catch by Cordero Patterson. Did not think he'd come away with that one. He did stay in bounds, however, but the Lions do spike the ball. Now at the 15, Stafford in the pocket. He's drifting. He's going to throw it up in the air. And is caught in the end zone by Cordero Patterson again. Two phenomenal grabs by Patterson. And this one finds the end zone. It's now a seven-point ball game. Don't know how Patterson came away with this one. He just kind of jumps up, brings it in with one hand, and lands on two feet. Very nice catch by Patterson. Now the kick is up by Prater, and it is good. So now Detroit. All they need is an onside kick, and they still have a slight chance. Will they get the onside kick? No, they will not get the onside kick. That one is fielded cleanly. And that is going to be your ball game here. Detroit does drop to Minnesota. They made it exciting late, but they lose their third straight game of the season, dropping to 2-5 two and five, as your final score is Minnesota 31, Detroit 24. Minnesota does improve to 500. They now sit at 4-4 four and four on the season, and our Lions sit at 2-5. and five. Very similar to last year. Remember last year we also started off 2-5. and five. We did finish 7-9, and nine, but these last two games haven't been pretty. Yes, the point to differential doesn't look terrible as we lost by 5 last week and 7 this week, but our Lions have yet to really com play a complete game since our win against Chicago. As we take a look at the injury report, Danny Amendola will miss the next five games with an upper arm fracture. So we will be lying heavily on rookies Tyler Vaughn and Seth Williams to step up in his absence. We only saw Seth Williams on the field briefly today. He had that downfield shot that was picked off by Harrison Smith. But we're going to ask a lot more of our rookies here going into the second half of the season, which doesn't sit well for a 2-5 and five Lions squad as they try to slump to the midway points and bounce back next week. Before we get to next week, take a look at week eight games around the league, starting off with a Jacksonville Jaguars win. If you remember, they were down 21 to seven and a half. So Justin Fields led the comeback through for three touchdowns and Fournette added one on the ground. So Justin Fields making a solid case for at least AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year. DJ Chark also had two touchdowns and on defense, a couple of sacks for Jacksonville and a pick by Marcus Williams, the former Saint. The second game, the Denver Broncos beat the Los Angeles Chargers 22-19. If you know, this is the first win of the season for Denver. They were 0-6. Now they moved to 1-6. It wasn't because of Drew Locke, however, as he had one interception on his day. As Denver's defense overpowered 
the Chargers late. As you can see, three sacks for Chubb, a sack for Aguim, and a half sack for Miller and Alexander Johnson. And it was an interception by Darquez Zanard that gets Denver their first win of the season. Speaking of first on Sunday night, Green Bay Packers suffer their first loss of the season as they got absolutely bulldozed by Seattle 49-14. to If you remember, we actually got beat down pretty good by Seattle early in the season as well. So Seattle, well, they might not have the best record in the NFC. They are a team to look out for as they make another run at the Super Bowl. So take a look at our players of the week. Both NFC players are actually in Minnesota. The team we just played is Kirk Cousins had his and Mike Hughes' pick six gets it for him. Chubbs had three sacks. We saw that. And Cam Newton is AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Next episode, we return home, but we face the 6-1 and one Green Bay Packers who are coming off their first loss of the season to Seattle. So you know they're not going to be happy as they head to Detroit. And we're on a three-game losing streak, and this is a tough matchup if we want to get off this losing streak. This Packers squad is absolutely loaded at all levels of both offense and defense as you take a look at their roster. Really no weaknesses on either side of the football. Obviously on offense, they're still anchored by Aaron Rodgers, who is still going strong in his age 37 season. And he's got a couple of weapons on offense, as we'll take a look at in a second. And they also spent a first round pick on Travis Etienne. So they they lost Aaron Jones, but they replaced him with Etienne. And Rodgers has a couple of weapons to throw to as well. Devontae Adams obviously leads that receiving core, but Devin Funches has made a resurgence to his career out in Green Bay as well. Our offensive line is also anchored by the best offensive left tackle in football, David Bakhtiari. And on defense, they have players at all levels, starting with Kenny Clark up front. He's going to be a nightmare as we couldn't handle Aaron Donald a couple weeks ago. And we go up against arguably the second best defensive tackle next week. Zedaria Smith is also someone to watch out for off the edge. He's going to be bringing plenty of pressure as well on that right side. And then the secondary, Jair Alexander, one of the best young corners in football. Someone we're going to try to look to stay away from. So this game, in my mind, has a lot of similarities against the Rams game a couple weeks ago. And we all know how that turned out. So hopefully we can save some misfortunes. Kalechi Osimile is healthy and ready to go, but we're going to give him another week to rest as Jonah Jackson will get the start. And we'll host the Green Bay Packers next episode. Sorry we couldn't get the win in this one and we continue our losing streak. But I thank you guys for the support. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below, especially for more franchise content as we continue to make 2021 a good year here on the channel. Love you guys. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.